Is it recording? Oh, it is. What's up, guys? Burglar of the Year, back again with another entry into my latest burglar vlog. Well, this time I'm breaking into the home of James Perfetto, who is known to be, well, <laughs> he's got some pretty good takes. But he's known to have one of the better security systems on the block. Good thing I have this super secret spray that reveals all the lasers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm in. Let's do it. Oh, let's try to get this on camera. I'm gonna spray. Oh, would you look at that? Hmm, it smells like cinnamon. But the most important fact is, there are no lasers. I could just walk right in. Huh. Awesome, I guess. What's up guys, James here from Reflect the Screen and I know exactly what you're thinking. Yes, I did see Ocean's 8 and I'm here to talk to you about it. Let me start off by saying I really wanted to love this movie. I saw trailers that made me just giddy and I wanted to go ahead into this film, come out raving about this movie. I mean, there's nothing bad about this movie until you sit down and then you watch it. So Ocean's 8 stars Kate Blanchett and Sandra Bullock as they spearhead a mission to go ahead and steal $150 million worth of jewels from a vault five feet on the ground that's owned by Cartier. Exhale. How do they plan on doing this? Well, they're going to put a necklace around a really well-known model named Daphne Kluger, who's played by Anne Hathaway. So let me scale back a bit. The film does a decent job at introducing both Sandra Bullock and Kate Blanchett's characters. Sandra Bullock plays Debbie Ocean, brother to Danny Ocean, who is George Clooney's character from Ocean's Eleven. Get it? It's all connected. And believe me, there are plenty more callbacks to the previous films. But Kate Blanchett, she plays Lou, who's a really good friend to Sandra Bullock before and, well, evidently after prison. So they try to get together a gang of girls because, look, this is a plan Sandra Bullock's character said she had five years in the making. So the entire first half of the film is pretty low energy, and I feel like there are good spots and there are mediocre spots, and then there are spots that I'm just... I could care less about, it, honestly. But the humor was decent, and I didn't really hate it, but what I had a feeling was, okay, are we going into this generic realm of heist films? Are we just gonna, you know, hey, I want you on my team. You're on my team. I want you on my team. Are you sure? Yeah? Okay, get on my team. Like, it just kind of went through the motions and went very fast in that first half, and I didn't have time to connect with the characters. And believe me, this cast is fantastic. Let me go through the list with you. Sandra Bullock plays Debbie Ocean. Kate Blanchett plays Debbie's best friend, Lou. Helena Bonham Carter plays fashion designer, Rose. Mindy Kalig plays a jeweler named Amita. Rihanna plays a computer hacker named Nineball. Nora Lum, or Aquafina as some know her as, plays a pickpocketer named Constance. And Sarah Paulson plays Tammy. Holy cow. If you tell me right now that this is a cast that is going to star in a heist film, I'm excited, like I told you. But none of them really clicked, and I feel like that's a problem with the script, which was written by, well, director and screenwriter Gary Ross, who has experience with Hunger Games, and he wrote this alongside Olivia Milch, who's, this is like her first breakthrough in terms of a big feature-length film as a screenwriter. Nothing worked. It, it just didn't feel like there was a cohesive script for these characters. They were written into a hole, and not only that, they were giving terrible jokes to, <laughs> boy, these jokes were bad, man. These jokes were not funny. And it doesn't help that James Corden, out of nowhere, was brought in for comic relief in the second half of the film, but that's neither here nor there, because by that point in the film, I just expected all the humor to kind of fall flat. I feel like the pacing was off in this movie. Uh, we get a very deliberate approach to the heist, and then when we get into the heist, things just don't feel like they're challenging enough for our characters. I, I honestly think that a challenge would have benefited them. And there's maybe like five or ten minutes where the group feels, oh my god, this might not work. That's when the film succeeded, then it strayed from that. This film needed more of a challenge to the heist because it was just totally predictable. I mean, from beginning to end, I wanted a monkey wrench to be thrown in there. Oh, I wanted the, oh my gosh, what if this happens? And then it maybe happens. And then they gotta improvise and get their way out of it. It, it, that doesn't really happen. And it doesn't help that within the heist we see our thieves use different mechanics and different tools and everything and they place them in convenient places and it's crazy when half the time we don't even really see the process leading up to the heist show these things. So they just happen and I'm like oh this is really convenient for the plot and then they're never referenced or mentioned ever again. I mean... <sighs> It's just so disappointing, honestly. And one of my biggest fears going into the movie was, please, do not let Ocean's 8 be a generic heist film. 
please. And what happens? It turns out to be a generic heist film with generic dialogue and generic humor. I mean, you can just really go down the list here and you can see that the film is just kind of bland. It's really meh, mediocre, and I honestly expected a lot more out of Ocean's 8, especially like I said with a star studded cast. Now the soundtrack wasn't terrible, I mean, the different technicalities weren't horrible. I, I did like some of the shot selection and I, I appreciated some of the transitions, even though the conclusion to this film had Windows Movie Maker like transitions. Boy oh boy. Ooh, but for the most part, I feel like, you know, the eye behind the camera wasn't terrible. Helena Bonham Carter deserved way more screen time. The first half, she was great. In the second half, they just kind of strayed from her. I mean, she's the best part of this cast and I think she's the most eccentric. She's sporadic, she's all over the place, but she works. The script doesn't cater to her though. Now, while the callbacks were nice, I feel like they were unnecessary in the latter half of the film. Look, the first half, sure, you go ahead and throw out Danny Ocean, you go and throw out, you know, some other characters that you see from previous films, but then leave that in the past, right? Isn't this supposed to be a reboot? So why does it feel like they just threw a skin on top of Ocean's Eleven and said, hey, this is gonna be all women? No, 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 no. Let this be all women because I'm all for it, but then let it be film that can stand on its own. Don't try to make this Ocean's Eleven. Don't do that. Don't. Don't. I want this to be a film that can be different. And it just, it wasn't. My biggest takeaway was I got up from my seat and thought to myself, what was compelling about this movie? What sticks with me? And, and the answer is really nothing. And I mean, I sound so down on this movie, but I think it was because I was so eager to see this movie. And it just didn't deliver. Sure, some of the moments were cool, but overall, Ocean's 8 is kind of a bummer. And if I can comment on the rest of the crew, I mean, Rihanna, her her acting isn't horrible, honestly. I mean, I haven't seen Battleships, I know about that. I like Darren Valerian just fine, contrary to popular belief. But in this film, she has this accent that, I don't know, is it a British accent? Is it a Jamaican accent? Can it be both? Can she decide? I don't know. It's weird what the director asked her to do in this role. Nora Lum is okay, but she has this weird persona about her that doesn't doesn't really click with the rest of the crew and I feel like she was maybe acting through her teeth in some moments. Sarah Paulson actually is probably the most grounded character and maybe the most relatable for so many women out there just in terms of you know being a mother. Then her character kind of just becomes generic, kind of like the rest of the movie. So what gives? But I really wish a different director other than Gary Ross could have taken the reins on this. And I feel like this film deserves a better script. No, no, let me scratch that. Not the film. I feel like these women deserve a better script. They deserve much more than what we were given in Ocean's 8. So there you have it guys. That's my take on Ocean's 8. If you want to go ahead and leave me a comment, let me know what you think below and shoot me a like if you enjoyed the video. Also, for more content, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more news articles and things that I don't regularly post in front of the camera, go ahead to reflectthescreen.com where you'll see way more content. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as always, I'll catch you at the next screening.